Go. All right. Seven o'clock, excuse me, seven o'clock. <laughs> Five o'clock, <laughs> we'll call the meeting up, uh, the second meeting of the month, July, Board of Trustees. Um, welcome, everyone. I'd entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of July 1. I'll make that motion. Mr. Crockett moves, and I will second that. Um, and further discussion regarding those minutes with corrections. Yes. Hearing none, we remove, please. Yeah. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Now we entertain a motion to pay bills in the amount of $60,514.11. Welcome down general fund, $3,396.35. Fire fund $21,728.84, cemetery fund $260.88, EMS billing $10,405.04, road and bridge $2,807.80, capital project $21,033. Is there a motion? I uh, will make that motion. I'll second the motion. Any further discussion regarding payment of those accounts? Hearing none, may you vote please. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Correspondence for the period is very light. Just have Green County Sanitary Engineering Department newsletter, uh, Ohio Township Association newsletter, Ohio Department of Taxation final determination, which was to uh, determine we were tax exempt, permanently tax exempt on the properties that we acquired from Wright State on Xenia Avenue, which will have our new fire station on, uh, on it in a year and a month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a letter from Citizens for Green Acres. This is regarding the, the solar um, um, solar generator project out uh, in Miami Township and Cedarville Township. This would be the second meeting, and it's going to be on the 19th at 6:30 at uh, Cedarville High School. The Zoning Commission minutes of April 16th. The fund status, revenue status for 7519, uh, and we missed one. Oh, yes. We missed the guide to Yellow Springs revisions. Oh, uh, that, no, I got uh, that on there. The email from Wise News are changes to 2819 IDL. Oh, I got it. There it is right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we missed the second one that I haven't put in there yet, which is the same, which is, this one was for the, uh, uh, this one was for uh, the township, and I put one in for the uh, cemeteries, so it's not there. Now, how about, how about any other ones? Hearing none, let's move to the fire department report. All right. So, since the last board meeting, we've had 39 EMS calls, 21 fire calls, done three fire safety inspection activities. Uh, with the weekend of June 29th, 30th, uh, six, I think it was six members completed our roof rescue operations course, mm -hmm. uh, taught by Jeremy and Nate. Uh, so that went well. Uh, firefighter TJ Fry, volunteer, uh, has completed his EMT class at Clark State and passed his registry. So he's our newest EMT. Okay. And the new things, EMT Georgia Goat has successfully completed her Firefighter 1 course at St. Clair. Um, that's now certified, and now she is in Firefighter 2. Um, we're paying for her course, and we'll be reimbursed by the state mm -hmm. in January-ish um, for her class. And we actually benefited because she's a McKinney County resident, so she was uh, able to get both those classes for like 900 bucks. Really? Amazing, those amazing prices they pay yeah. in county and St. Clair, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Uh, and then recent incidents of note. Um, Wednesday, July 3rd, we were dispatched to report a building collapse on Smith Road. The That's people trapped. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, so we got there and luckily uh, no one was hurt or trapped, but uh, most likely due to the torrential rain, uh, their entire front wall of their basement foundation collapsed. It had all just been down there, actually, which was really lucky. We were topping sound and got out. Um, they said it was like a wall, a war, like a big wave just come out. Yeah, field. must have been. The it's neighbor, kind of thing, Mr. You know. Kugler, stopped me. He's got a rain gauge. He said 35 minutes they received four and a half inches of rain out there. Wow. I mean, there's a place I've never seen flooded. Before. That's why I heard it was like just like a wave of water it, came yeah, out of that. Field. It had to be. It never comes out of that. that right. way. Wasn't it kind of this house is on a bank? built into a bank somehow that kind of... It's just lower than the field in front of it. 
and then their driveway. So it's water just kind of cascaded. Water. They said they never had that problem before, but there was so much rain. I mean, DYS was flooded in places I've never seen it flooded before. Yeah. And that first culvert on SNP, like when you turn off Dayton Hill Springs, mm -hmm. there was water coming up over the top. I've seen so that much before, but never like in similar. Never seen water. I've, I've seen, seen over the road down like similar, but never come out of that. Yeah, field. that's crazy. So they were lucky. Yeah. Uh, building inspection came out, took a look at the building, and um, board of company came up and covered up the hole. So, yeah. is, it, is it total? Or? I haven't. The wall. Wall. They're still waiting to hear. Uh, building inspection was concerned about it's one of those unit build houses they kind of truck in the two halves and put together. Mm -hmm. um, and then most of it's, I didn't know this, but most of their structural stability comes from the foundation walls. Mm -hmm. They don't have a lot of cross beams or like that. So. But Al and the inspector on the scene kind of felt that if they get something in there to actually shore it up, mm -hmm. they might be okay. But they're going to welcome the insurance on the same figure. So the above ground part of it didn't break or stretch? Not at the time, but um, Mr. Semler had gone in to get medications. And uh, he was like, I'm going to go back in there again. And all mm -hmm. four was yeah. making weird noises, which was great for the yeah. inspector. Came in to tell him at the time that he was coming out. So don't worry, we'll go back. In. Mm -hmm. um, so they were very lucky. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this past Saturday night, uh, guys were dis yeah Saturday night they were dispatched to a barn fire on South River Road. Um, on their arrival, they had a fully involved barn with two horses trapped inside. Who unfortunately did not make it out. Uh, the barn was filled with tons of straw and hay, so it burned for a long time. Uh, guys worked for a long time to get under control. They were done around. Dispatch on 7:30. Um, what they do for water? They had to shuttle down to Cedar River University. Mm -hmm. uh, so they had tankers, Art Tanker, mm -hmm. Houston, Pitchin, and two Cedarville, and one and two from Zion Township. Wow. So they shuttled down to the university and back. So mm -hmm. about six to five or six miles on trip. Probably. Mm -hmm. Can you still drive out of the mill? I think that's all done. Yeah, I haven't been able to do that in years. Uh, yeah, that's. Why can't you throw a line in the river? Uh, we can't do it. The river, there's no real way for us to access it. It's too shallow. Uh, we couldn't get to. Mm -hmm. It's deep in the gorge, but we can't get down. Mm -hmm. We can't get down there. There used to be the mill race at the mill that I think it was Chief Willowman had um, a drone hydrant installed, but it's never been deep enough and there's so much silt in there uh, that it doesn't really serve our purposes. Um, Green County it wasn't some of the water. It's one of the agricultural things. They had a grant to install dry hydrants mm -hmm. in the county uh, probably about eight years ago. And we didn't qualify at all because none of our water sources are deep enough. We have to have at least eight feet yeah. to the top of the dry hydrant and two feet below and we have nothing that comes even except we're going for a pool. That comes, that comes that close. So, um, so the Clifton metro area, we either shuttle back to Yellow Springs and the Cedarville or up to the airport. Um, it's too bad. I mean, we've got Clifton Reserve right there. It goes yeah. right to the edge. Yeah, it's still not deep. It's not deep enough, unfortunately. Because huh. the, the problem is that silt builds up. Because mm -hmm. uh, they looked at that one. Because I suggested, oh, what about this? Because we can actually try to drive close. And went out and took a look. Why can't you float the end of the... We could go and put a fire there. engine there and put a float, but I mean, it wouldn't be permanent, obviously. Right. Um, and it, it could work, but it often takes, I mean, it takes more time to do than just... We have, with all those tankers shuttling, you always have we water moving pretty well. Mm -hmm. So, okay. you just have to have enough tankers to do it. Yeah. Well, fortunately, we're in a position, uh, geographically and, you know, friendly, that if we can get enough mutual aid, we oh, yeah. generally get yeah. tankers. Yeah, and I worked that plenty. pretty well. And you've got Houston Pitchin and Cedarville all have gigantic tankers, mm -hmm. so I don't have pretty much. So. Speaking of tankers, did we ever get a new duck valve for the old one? No, I just checked on it today when I got back, and it's on back order. <laughs> so as soon as it gets here, we'll plop that sucker on. But, uh, I don't know if they make them in China. <laughs> 
maybe it's a tariff issue, but. <laughs> The impact started a while ago. And yeah, a couple started. weeks ago, and I couldn't get anything out of it. You know, we're not doing something right. Like no, it's probably possible that it's. Batteries are dead. It sat for a while. It's possible. Like the guys are supposed to go out and start once a week, right? Yeah, it has. Does that have a shore on there? It's got a place for a shore on, yeah. I'll just find my cord. We've got, we used to have a plug in. I can plug it in there and charge it. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll try it. Definitely. Otherwise, I have to take that whole book first step off of it. I think it's so. the battery. Yeah, I think it's mm -hmm. under that step. Then we jump in and I'll just make sure the guys go out once a week and fire it up. Drive it around. Well, we have to charge it. Yeah. Well, yeah, first it's got to charge. But. But yeah, it's got a shoreline on the on the passenger side. Okay. <coughs> I'll see if I can find that. We made one, so if we have them out there. Oh, okay, cool. Awesome. And that's it. Okay. Mark, anything for the chief? Um, so we'll do the new firehouse report. Um, well, let me back up one step. Aren't we due um, a second payment from Bath Township on the 15th of July? Yeah. Just wondering. I don't remember what, that, what the schedule was. I mean, I know there's two payments a year, mm -hmm. but I, I don't know. Could have sworn it was 15th of July. Okay. Were, were we invoicing them, or is it, was it just showing up in the mail? Honestly, I do not know. I, the first payment, I think they just sent, because we never sent it. I mean, I never sent mm -hmm. an invoice. No, they just sent us a check. So, well, we'll wait if it doesn't show up. I know they've canceled Seriously. their last meeting, so maybe they haven't had. Mm -hmm. They'll meet again to the 31st or something. Because they two out of three trustees were out of town. So. Mm -hmm. That's the skinny up. That's the word on the street. I see. <laughs> okay, so we'll go to the new firehouse. Uh, <laughs> it's very interesting. <laughs> <That's actually. laughs> we had a um, lengthy, and I'm talking lengthy, phone conference call last Wednesday. And we'll have another one tomorrow, but hopefully it won't be so lengthy. Um, I guess the main thing is I've, I've uh, placed ads in the three major newspapers again for the bids uh, in the new format, obviously. And so they will start Wednesday and run for three weeks. Um, and then we'll have our pre-construction meeting uh, on the 31st uh, at the Bryan Center at 2.30 in the afternoon. I set that up also. And that's good. Uh, what else did we do? We cut a zillion things, I swear, out of the firehouse, but it only am amounted to $54,002, and we needed $90,000 more out of it. Um, some of the things are the geotech fabric will probably not be used. Um, we're working to get some costs out of the engineering architectural fee column and the uh, uh, project inspection and equipment columns. Um, hopefully we'll be able to get a little more out of that. Denny's working on that. We may know more phone calls uh, after tomorrow. Um, some of the exterior signage and the turnout gears and personal locker gears and window shades will probably be pulled from the base bid and we'll purchase them on the open market. Uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to give up be how much we're going to save there, but it won't have it won't have the roughly eight percent markup fee, and we won't have to install it in, in prevailing wage uh, uh, lines. Uh, we're going to change the water line from uh, ductile iron to PVC to save money. Uh, that village uses all PVC on their their main water lines now too, so uh, that could save us in between five and ten thousand dollars. We're, instead of specifying brick, we're going to provide an allowance of $400 per thousand brick. That way, uh, these contractors can uh, can choose what they prefer and show it to us, and you know, then we'll get to choose from what they have available. Uh, not really saving us money, but giving us more flexibility. Um, oh, he did, he did mark down the total savings of of taking the turnout gear and personal lockers window shades out of the base bid. It's going to save us 
$1,972, uh, not a whole lot. We're really getting down to the nitty gritty here. Um, there was a uh, recommendation from a contractor saying that we should uh, we should flatten our roof line one step from a two to two to twelve to a one to twelve, going from like this to this, and that would make it flat enough that a membrane roof would work on it instead of a standing seam, and that would save us ninety thousand dollars or something. But we had a long discussion about that and decided that you know we've just changed the roof line and changed the exterior and changed made so many changes changes on that that just we weren't going to go that we weren't going to go that early so uh, that was uh, that was shelved as they say um, we have removed uh, I think we put it in a, an alternate yeah we did put it in alternate three parking spaces in the back uh, for an additional fifteen thousand dollars in savings, we talked about not 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 piping the downspouts into a sanitary or not sanitary but sewer, sewer line. Sanitary sewer? No, not sanitary. Storm storm sewer. Storm. That's right. I couldn't think of that name. And uh, to save that would save fifteen thousand dollars, but or ten thousand dollars. I'm sorry, but the discussion was that uh, if if that was run, run onto splash blocks uh, in the winter time, although he, they thought it would ice up. Well, if, if it was it was too cold, if it was cold enough to freeze, it wouldn't drain off the downspouts. So I don't know. <laughs> I, I guess the idea was first it rained, and then it covered the apron, and then it froze, and then it would be a problem. So this way we're the that's a. Mm -hmm. uh, Are you going to say not a very likely scenario? Small things. That's uh, a very standard cost cutting thing that comes back and bites you in the ass. Mm -hmm. I saw it at several stations. So you can wonder why it things, so. I tried to convince them to <laughs> remove piping insulation uh, on cold water pipes and, and not just the hot water pipes, but they said it was a code, uh, code requirement. And I had hoped we could get the compressed air piping. Uh, changed from I think iron to uh, PVC and apparently that's already been accounted for because Dan followed up with KLH. Um, the, um, the original urinals were still in the uh, in the bid estimate and I asked if they'd been accounted for in the final final estimate and he noted that they had been, even though they're still in the project estimate. Um, I thought perhaps we could eliminate the one drinking fountain, and apparently it has to, uh, it needs to stay also, so we're not making much progress with that stuff. Uh, <coughs> some of the solid surfaces, some of the casework that might be able to be uh, uh, gotten off the shelf as opposed to having them custom made. Um, those, that was decision to have some of those changed with the exception of two ADA custom ones in the kitchen and that's going to count to save fifteen thousand um, dollars the concrete apron at the front and rear of the buildings uh, are going to be narrowed down to align with the overhead door jams uh, this would eliminate approximately 445 square feet of heavy duty concrete and 188 square feet of heavy duty asphalt to save six thousand thirty dollars um, we're going to use bat insulation uh, with a vapor barrier instead of cavities of the walls rather than the closed cell spray foam that you see those guys are spraying all the time. That's five six thousand dollars, and that amounts to uh, fifty four thousand two hundred dollars. Um, in my infinite wisdom, and hopefully got my fingers crossed, I suggested that I would, or I said that I would move at this meeting, I gotta get this right formally, move at this meeting for the um, general fund to contribute an additional $25,000 to the project out of its, what would end up being two years worth of uh, income, because it wouldn't be needed until the end of 2019, or 2020. Um, 
hopefully that would not be necessary because of cost savings and we do we recall we do have two hundred seventy five thousand dollars in contingencies that uh, are not being uh, not being earmarked for anything on the construction side so you know, we may end up not having to do that but we do need to get closer to this uh, ninety thousand uh, dollar mark uh, to be uh, to be hopefully to come in within that ten percent window that we've got to deal with on when the bids come in. So having made that motion, <coughs> having made that motion, is there a second? Okay, Mr. Um, to repeat the motion mm -hmm. is um, that you're authorizing the general fund to contribute $25,000 towards the new fire station project at the end of 2020. Is that what, how, is that how you said that? Uh, if needed. Um, we, if needed. We, we may need to make that um, we may need to make that uh, commitment when the bids come in. If it's that if it's that close, that we need the twenty five thousand there in order to be w within the ten percent, because USDA won't let us accept any bids if we're over the ten percent. Okay, so authorize general fund to contribute twenty five thousand to the project. On bid opening, yeah. Or, uh, on uh, at bid opening, yeah, I guess. Because at that's bid what opening, we, yeah. at, if necessary. Right. Okay. And uh, and that's all. That's all for that. Uh, I'm still working on the uh, builder's risk insurance request from travelers. I've, I've played a little phone tag and not not worked hard enough at it, and, and I will get that done this week and submit it to uh, Arma, and then they will submit it to travelers, and then we'll get it. Big premium bill, like everything else, of five million dollars worth of builder's risk insurance. How much is that? How much is that going to cost? They estimated it um, less than five million. <laughs> yeah, less than five million. Could be somewhere yeah. between twenty and thirty thousand dollars. <coughs> oh, I need to get the insurance business. Do you want to do? We need to do a call for the roll. Of Call the roll on this motion. We didn't do that. We didn't. Let's let's okay. vote on that motion. Yeah, back to that. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, Mr. Mutcher. Yes. Mr. Crockett. Yes. Okay. Oh, I have one more. I have one more motion. Uh, also, uh, you recall over the last couple of meetings we've gone back and forth as to who would be appointed prevailing wage coordinator. Mm -hmm. uh, Margaret was. I was going to do it originally, and then. Somebody volunteered Margaret to do it, which was very nice of them. I still don't know who that was, <laughs> but if I find out, so that answer you for not being in a meeting, I'll, right? I'll buy him a beer or something. I don't know. Uh, but then Margaret gracefully um, declined the uh, invitation to do it, and so it was withdrawn. And so it went back to me, and then um, I got to thinking that who among us has got some experience with construction work and might have a little get your, get your, and might might have a little time in their schedule to do it. So uh, he's not here this evening, but I'm going to move that we appoint uh, Don Hollister as the prevailing wage construction prevailing wage coordinator for the construction project. So I've made the motion. Is there a second? Prevailing wage. What is it? Coordinator. coordinator. Um, <laughs> is there any further discussion regarding that? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Crockett. Yes. Mr. Meacher. Yes. Now, <laughs> because of sunshine laws and everything, I, you know, I couldn't tell him. We couldn't, you know, we couldn't make that decision beforehand, but I will let him know that the motion was made and was passed that the board would like him to do that position. Now, he can accept or reject it, uh, and if he happened to reject it, although I had an indication that he would accept it, if he happened to reject it, Assistant Chief Powell said he would take on the responsibility. So one way or the other, uh, we've got that position covered now. And that was, that was a sticky little thing. OK, anything else for the new firehouse? Let's move to the 
cemetery in the report. Cemetery. Sexton Coconut. We got busy. We were busy last week. We had three burials in one day. Which oh. one ever? Four burials. Yeah. And we managed to take care of it. In one cemetery or both? Both. Yeah. Like two down here and one in Brooklyn. So one yeah, in Brooklyn was supposed to have been Tuesday, but they called it 11 45 and said. You were digging one when they were. Burying somebody, weren't when you? Brandon stayed and covered mm -hmm. up here in, in the, the second one, the one o'clock one. Good thing they were gravesides and didn't have to leave them in. Mm -hmm. But it worked out. We managed to get a little area first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we we're good enough to take care of things. Mm -hmm. We did. Um, the weeds are turning brown if you haven't noticed on the roads. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to work on the one in Clifton this week if we don't get our wedging started. So you can grab on it. And did you, did you happen to address the weeds in the Memorial Scattering Garden? Not at the moment. We took care of some, but we didn't spray them at that day. I'll take care of them. Mm -hmm. we, pulled, we pulled a bunch, but it's like yeah. the others have worn up decided they'd come up down. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's amazing. It didn't take long until you're back. And, yeah. uh, I noticed that today because I placed those stones around and a lady brought the stone for quickly. So we placed it and the others. I can't believe oh, Rothman's had those stones made. They're, they're I, in place now. I had long conversations with him about that, and then look what showed up. Well, they're placed. Yeah. And uh, I think that's it. Man. And on, on the roads, it's just hopefully we can wedge. You know, wedging does when they start. She said they'd hold us off as long as they could. You had any information from Fairborn about that? Uh, he was supposed to call me today and he didn't, and I didn't, didn't get a call him, so I'll check in the morning. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, it's, a, it's good news, I hope. Mm -hmm. uh, and if not, I'll take care of the roads in Clifton and get ready for that and go out and do some trimming. Mm -hmm. We'll be on that. Things break down, I'm kind of yeah. juggling, fixing things, and keep it up. Do the best we can. Anything else for cemetery? <clears throat> you potentially selling a natural burial uh, lot tomorrow? Saturday. Mm -hmm. Saturday. The lady Saturday, I'll throw her a meter at one o'clock because I'll be in town. I'll be here and I'll leave this weekend. Inspector Zoff uh, worked on a, a project for us to lay out potential locations for the Oak Grove Cemetery. Oh. And uh, where is that? Oh, yeah. And he calculated that what's the width? 245 feet? 366. In that in that part back there. Okay. 366 and it's 691 feet long. We could do uh, nine trees on the length if we had a 77 foot canopy. Remember, we talked about an 80 foot right. canopy. Um, and five trees across if we did a 73 foot canopy. And I'm thinking, you know, at least on, you know, we could let that canopy go over the edge a little bit, you know, and spread it out a little bit. You can't let them go together, I mean, just the, the trees, you're talking about the canopy on the tree. Yeah, but it could hang over, especially, I mean, obviously it could hang over into the natural burial. You know, I mean, we could plant that tree right up against the, the line, and it would be no, we wouldn't care whether the 40 feet encroached out. through the first the, natural area. Right, yeah. Right. Now, we need to be a little bit more careful of putting it closer to the line of because we have no idea what would be there, you know, in the future. Um, but maybe just a, a needs to, you know, we're trying to s squeeze things around. So anyway, that was nice of Richard to do that. Is 80 a standard, or is that, just, I mean, they're not all 80 feet canopy, right? Well, theoretically they are. I mean, that's what they say to leave. And that keeps them from getting into each other? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when they're fully mature. I've looked at a few, and I thought, that's not quite 80 feet. You know, when you look at some of the mature ones, you're thinking, mm, is that a little hot? Well, are they fully mature? I mean, are they 100? Well, like the one on the corner, of, 
to go to Fairfield and come in the cemetery. That's pretty so that's not eighty feet. It looks like eighty feet. Yeah, I just know what I mean. I'm, I'm going to no before we before before we, you know, get there, I'm going to consult with our uh, landscape architect uh, who you know uh, did the design for the new addition for the trees. Yeah, and, Roger. Roger, yeah. And uh, and get his opinion on what the best best tree and best canopy and would be. So anyway, I just thought I'd to mention that. Okay. Um, nothing else for roads, fiscal officer. Sullivan? Has no report. I see. <laughs> Well, that makes that simple, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And I guess we even get more simple for the zoning uh, inspector's report for the first meeting. Or, no, wait a minute. This yeah, is no, the second meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so. Well, he's legit. Bad, bad person. All right, standing committee reports. Uh, MVRPC, that's easy. We did not meet last month. Uh, TAC committee, I'm not sure if Don went one or not. Uh, Regional Planning uh, Commission meets tomorrow. Um, we did meet last month. It's just always the weirdest thing because then I have to remember exactly what we did last month. We approved one plot. Uh, we talked about updating the, the comprehensive plan for the county. We also talked about the complete census report. Uh, we did some budgetary work on the, um, on the uh, office. Uh, but the office is going to purchase a large-scale printer in coordination with the uh, Green County engineer's office so they can both <coughs> share it and share the cost, which is good. And that happened last month. Um, senior Senator Mark, anything happening there? Um, no. Um, no. Um, Clifton Cemetery, Don's not here, Economic Sustainability Committee, you, you went there last yes, meeting, correct? I did. Uh -huh. And. Um, it was a jam-packed meeting, mm -hmm. but um, and I took detailed notes with the thought that I would uh, be able to read them and report. Mm -hmm. But uh, oh, the floor is yours. Yeah. Well, <laughs> as it turns out, I can't read them. Oh, <laughs> but um, it was. Um, it was focused, and a lot of the conversation at the end had to do with um, the men's group, um, what they were uh, planning. And, uh, you mean, like, in the past where they did Economic studies, or right. okay, because I was trying to figure out what the connection was, but mm -hmm. I, I see now if they do another study, mm -hmm. then your committee could benefit from that. If they don't, they might do one on their own, right. or I don't know, something like that. And, yeah, um, I suspect that you know, that the men's group will do a study. Do you? It would be fairly costly and it would be mm -hmm. a year or so down the road. Well, I know in the past, different political subdivisions, the village and I know we have contributed to those studies in the past also. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not saying we will or we won't, but we don't know what the depth and breadth of the studies will be. Right. That's um, so, you know, if it comes down to it, uh, let us know what you're thinking about doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the uh, I got in trouble the last time. Why is DC DC? I, I can't report on it because I reported on it. Or no, maybe I didn't on the first because they meet. We meet the same day as the as our first meeting, first Monday, and so I might have kept quiet about it at our last meeting. I don't think I saw anything in the minutes about it, so I'll talk about it. Uh, we're established as a corporation with the Secretary of State of Ohio. Uh, we've been issued an employer identification number so we can start, um, uh, we can establish a, a checking account and you know, we could borrow or spend money uh, as a nonprofit 
uh, even though we're not technically a nonprofit, but um, we have a, a window while we're in the application <laughs> process that we can operate as a nonprofit. Uh, I'm not sure how long that window lasts, but I know it's there for a ways. We spent the whole, almost the whole meeting, talking about uh, housing uh, in and around Yellow Springs and Miami Township and what potentially might be um, coming down the road for developments or for the glass farm or for um, other, potential, other potential increases in the housing stock. Um, of course, there's nothing that's specific and the uh, Yellow Springs superintendent School superintendent, either the old one or the new one, Mario, uh, or the new person, um, and either the, uh, either of the school board members, the two school board members that theoretically should be there, none of those people were there, so we didn't get any further information on their idea of selling um, Mills Lawn property for residential housing and and the high school property for residential housing. So that's still kind of on the back burner. Um, I guess that's really the major the, the major part of that. Um, complete streets, that would be done, and he's not here. The mill is doing fine. Um, I went through it the other day. Seems to be holding up. Um, I can add one thing. Community foundations. To the, to the Clifton Union Cemetery report, which is I did follow up with um, Bath Township, I mean, no, Green Township, I'm sorry, um, about where's their payment <laughs> for the 2018 maintenance. And um, the president said that he had forgotten all about it and asked me to get a copy to him, which I did two weeks ago. And I haven't, I haven't received a check, so I'm going to call them. I'm going to follow up this week. Thing like being halfway through July for prior know, yeah, years. You know, and um, yeah, and Clifton uh, Cemetery can go ahead and pay for pay pay the township. There's enough money to do that and we'll stop waiting on Bath Township. That'd be good. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate it. Uh, any new business this evening? Any old business? Hearing none. Entertain a motion to adjourn, Mark. And we'll make that motion. We'll make that motion. I'll second. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.